Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Hartford HealthCare's Tina Verona, coming to you live from Hartford Hospital's Community Health Building, located right here at 132 Jefferson Street in Hartford, a spectacular building. Um, just opened its doors uh, here recently. I'm so happy to be joined by Dr. Connie Vergara. He's the medical director here at the Hartford Hospital Community Health Building. Thank you so much for joining oh, us. My pleasure, my pleasure. I am so excited to be here with you. We're in excited this, too. In this brand new building that has been many years in the making and certainly a long time coming, you guys provide care to over 40,000 visits each year to those in need for the community. This is so needed. Talk to me about your feelings and, and this new building. Well, the, the building, as you can see, is uh, brand new. Um, it's different from what we've had in the past in our older building, which is approaching its centennial in about three years. It That's, was time. It's about time. <laughs> in fact, uh, I keep saying fun fact was mm -hmm. the first self-leveling elevator in the state of Connecticut still operates in that building. Mm -hmm. Um, the building is much needed because we thought it'd be a new start. Our patients deserve a, a new edifice and with the new edifice becomes a new way of also delivering care. A lot of the focus we will do in this building will not only be the care that we do, acute care, chronic care, but we'll also focus on wellness and population health. Mm -hmm. And this building is going to allow you to do that so much better, so much more um, comprehensively, and, and really addressing the patient's needs. Let's kind of take a, a tour here and, and look at some of the things. There's one of the waiting rooms here. We are on the second floor. This is adult primary care where we are standing, right? That's correct. Um, the, the practices that will migrate over are really just two of the six floors of the existing brownstone. Um, the adult primary care will actually occupy the second floor and half of the first floor. And then the third floor is our community care center and infectious disease uh, division, which will be on the next floor. And, and over at the Brownstone, the former building, this dental services are still um, housed over there, correct? We have still at the existing Brownstone the dental services and oral maxillofacial. And then our specialty clinics still exist over there, which is a compendium of about 12 specialty clinics including cardiology, ENT, GI, urology, just to name a few. And then the fourth floor is our, the only uh, one of two, I think, existing cystic fibrosis centers in, in the state of Connecticut. So uh, yes, so it, it, we're a little bit uh, divided in that sense, but we're still cohesive as, as an operation. Absolutely, especially here, there's all these services located in this one area for patients to come in and get those health needs addressed. That's correct. So in, in, in the services that we have here, for example, in addition to primary care, we also have integrated in it mental health professionals, social work, nutrition, clinical pharmacists, addiction services, smoking cessation services, all in, all in the building. All vital services. Dr. Bergara, let's take a walk in through here. So we're going into the adult primary uh, care section. Um, some office space over here, beautiful paintings on the wall. I want to bring um, uh, everybody over here to the medication room, the Pixis room. Um, this is brand new and exciting for you guys here because this is not something that you had um, over at the Brownstone building. Tell us how this works and how you are able to get the medications more efficiently now. Well, the, the, the beauty of the Pixis is that our pharmacy colleagues have real-time inventory of what's there. Current system in our old building is whenever we ran out, we had to call the pharmacy or or let them know of our inventory here. They know at, at, a, at a glimpse if we're running lower or, or sufficient. The other is a secure that it affords and it's only password activated and you don't have to search for a key, whoever has the key and so forth. So it's real time in addition to temperature regulated um, refrigerators that can also be monitored at the, at the central pharmacy main hospital. So the access to medication is a lot quicker um, and to get that medication to patients is a lot more efficient. True. Yes, that's true. So I want to, this is an exciting feature now, I want to kind of walk over here into one of the exam rooms and we're going to find um, Sarah, who is a nurse here, which I think this is really fascinating, one of the um, newer offerings that you didn't have in the Brownstone building, and this is about interpretation. Um, you sort of have um, many people from many different backgrounds here, and before at the Brownstone, it was either staff coming in, which they still do, um, but now with this new video communication system, you have access to over 200 plus interpreters, which is incredible. That's exciting. It is we, exciting. We've never had that before. Okay, so Sarah here, yes. thank you Sarah Small for joining us, who's a nurse here. Um, show us how this works. Yep, so we go into the application on a computer, and so at each exam room has a workstation. 
um, in it, and we just put our information in here, and then it gives you all the languages. We even have American Sign Language um, through this video app, mm -hmm. and so I'm just going to choose Spanish, and it's calling our video interpreter. Hopefully it'll work. <laughs> there we go. It's coming up. There we go. She is. Hi, my name is Sophia. I'll be your Spanish interpreter. How may I help you? Thank you, Sophia. We're just doing a little test. We're um, just doing a little test for this interpreter application. Thank you. Okay, thank you for using our service and have a nice day. No problem. Okay, so that's wonderful. So on any given uh, time when you have somebody coming in here that may not speak English or Spanish or, or, or maybe Creole or something, you have access to these interpreters um, whenever you need them. That's pretty exciting. Uh, that is exciting. Like I said, we never had that access before real time. We really had to rely on people, or at least language line, which has its limitations as well, served us well, uh, mm -hmm. but this is on the fly, really quick, and mm -hmm. with a visual component, which is good. And, well. and we're also here in an exam room, and um, I see that there's, you can um, check eyes and ears, there's a scale here, so this, you can actually screen patients here in this private exam room, which is something that's new as well. Correct, and also in there are integrated units in every room and and the pulse ox we had to run down the hall to get so it's all integrated here complete with eye ear examination. A, a much better experience oh, overall for the patient yeah. um, in terms of having it in a private setting. Dr. Vergara, let's also talk about um, the, the partnerships that you have with the community. You do so much for the patients but it also goes beyond that in terms of reaching out into the community um, through your partnerships. Let's talk about some of the social determinants of health that you address um, as well on a daily basis and so how some of those partnerships affect that. Well, I mentioned any time, uh, I think I'm a broken record, the number one problem of our patients is not medical but psychosocial. Mm -hmm. uh, we have numerous initiatives in that light. I think the two that has the highest profile because they receive a HHC executive sponsorship include um, one is our medical legal partnership it's called it's our partnership with the Greater Hartford Legal Aid in that we determined um, way back when really this was a, uh, an initiative that was thought about first by our, our uh, social work colleagues and Kim Harrison who's the executive sponsor felt that it was a, a worthy service mm -hmm. so the the premise is that if patients medical legal needs are met for example people with immigration issues, uh, eviction notices, disability barriers, then the help, the legal force of lawyers on site would be able to help them. So we were fortunate to have the Greater Hartford Legal Aid be on site for 15 hours a week to, to get those referrals from us. Our social work colleagues, their expertise will identify those eligible patients and then we can make the appointments to them. And having the legal component really transcends in, in providing that medical care that they need to. It sort of goes hand in hand. Oh yeah, like I said, if we if we've seen it many times, if we can get them housing, then everything follows suit. They have a place to stay, they store their medications and so forth. I want to talk about another initiative that just launched this past weekend with Wholesome Wave. Um, and this is a national organization that we're partnering with to deal with um, again the um, social determinants of health with people with diabetes and who may have been hospitalized over um, the last several months because of diabetes. This is a really incredible program that's targeting healthy eating habits. Uh, talk to us about the partnership with Wholesome Wave. Well, we, 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 we knew for, for some time that the major determinants for conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, is really not just medications, it's really a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is the prototypical disease, I think, of that type. In the past, we, we tried to tackle this with farmer's market, I remember, and I, I think we were, we were successful in getting out vouchers, but we never really saw the end product of those vouchers, whether they reclaimed it. The Wholesome Wave, as an as a, as a organization, has figured out that you can <coughs> give patients credit card type vouchers where we can track their healthy spending. Uh, and they, we partner with local uh, food purveyors like Seatown, mm -hmm. uh, Hartford Mobile Food Mart, for which they can procure those healthy fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, then we couple that with nutrition education, and we were fortunate to partner with UConn's Population Health uh, Nutrition Initiative. Mm -hmm. and, and so we think that the two will translate to better health, and we can check that by 
standard clinical metrics we take for diabetes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, so it's a six month track um, that you'll track these patients um, and see at the six, after the six months. And um, this program is, is nationwide and it has changed so many lives. So looking forward to seeing uh, what, what is to come in six months with these people and, and <laughs> changing their lifestyles and making these lifestyle modifications that really have an impact on their overall health. Dr. Vergara, thank you so much for joining oh, us. My and pleasure. of course, for pleasure. all of the wonderful work that you do here at the Hartford Hospital Community Health Center. It's congratulations on this beautiful facility. It's so well deserved. Well, thank you. I, I'd like to make a correction. It's mm -hmm. not the wonderful work that I Well, everybody, <laughs> absolutely. And it does take so, a village. It's, it's it you and everybody else and um, you heading the program and, and sort of leading the charge and everybody who donates their time um, uh, to make this all possible. We appreciate it. So thank you. And of course, as always, thank you for joining us. I'm Hartford Healthcare's Tina Verona. We'll see you soon.